Right now, form, future, everything in the table. Who would you take? Rashford or Vinicius Jr.? Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Lats Footy Show. I'm your host, Keeks. Here are my co hosts. Viejo. And today we have an emergency recording because Real Madrid have done it again in a Champions League match. Another comeback. Insane. And it's safe to say me and every other Madrid fan <laughs> are completely spoiled because we just we're just never disappointed in the Champions League. It's just who Fair. who's down two 0 at Anfield in the Champions League? Well, just at Anfield in Real general Madrid. and comes back and scores five. Yet again, let me repeat, mm -hmm. at Anfield, who does that? Nah, nobody. Nobody ever will do it again, probably. Probably not for a while. L L who, who wins Anfield? Regardless, yeah, regardless of, of Real Madrid being superior where Liverpool stand, going to Anfield and putting five past Allison is crazy. That's, that's, that's stupid. Um, I mean, I understand Liverpool haven't been good this season. But it's still Anfield. They, it's still rare for them to even lose Anfield. And for them to get like, scored yeah. on five goals past them, it's, unbe it's unbelievable, honestly. Um, inst five after instant two. reactions to the game. Like, what was going through your head as a neutral fan? Uh, seeing Darren Nunez put a fucking golazo in the back of the net. That finish really was, early on. That finish caught me was, by surprise. Really by surprise. I didn't think he was going to place that. I way. wasn't even like mad or disappointed. I would consider first because that was actually a good. I wasn't. Goal. I wasn't really paying attention yet. I just saw him break away. So I gave a shit pass and he dealt with it. Dude, that was an insane finish. <laughs> I went the complete other way. <laughs> no, sick. but Darwin's lucky. Like he's getting some type of form. He scored this game. Oh, uh, he scored against Newcastle as well. What is he at? Like six goals, five, seven, I believe. No nah, way. Seven, right? No way. He's at seven. He's not top. He's not top ten scorers for sure. I'll tell you nah, that. I'm not even close. He'll end up in that list though. Yeah, but um, yeah. Instant reactions. What I think of the game. Um, we went two 0 down. I honestly thought it was the end. I thought we were just gonna like only score one and go to the Bernabeu and like come back. Obviously, I did not expect for us to do that. That second half. That was completely insane. I, Liverpool were just completely shut down. No energy, even though they have basically a 12 man with that atmosphere they have. So-called atmosphere. Modric, Militao, Nacho Fernandez getting subbed in for Alaba, who's getting battered by Salah, by the way. I think Nacho brought in that stability that Alaba wasn't bringing, unfortunately. Um, Camavinga. Another good game. Had a very slow start after that slip to the to Liverpool's second goal, which was annoying because almost every player in today's game was slipping. I don't know what's going on with that pitch. It was pretty annoying, to be honest. But um, we found a way. We're Madrid. It's it's unimaginable, to be honest. Uh, I'm in peak life right now, to be honest, as a Madrid fan. It just It's pretty standard stuff, to be honest, from Real Madrid. To, not necessarily the scoreboard, but I think in terms of Finishing in a UCL knockout match, finishing in the second half, like a regular Real Madrid side does. Like a regular Carlo Ancelotti Real Madrid side. Yeah. More than likely, you guys end up having a shit first 20, maybe 30 minutes. Who knows? I think 30 minutes will probably be the max before and, something happens. So. And it's crazy. We still don't learn from it. Like, we got it's, it's always the exact same shit. It's always the exact same thing with Real Madrid to end up doing something wrong in the first half, maybe first couple, couple parts of the half, switching it up, either making this up from an injury or something, and end up. Making something out of nothing. And yet again, Madrid in a Champions League night turned into a complete other species, a Michael complete is. monster. We've been, to be honest, to our standards in La Liga, we've been pretty mediocre. But as soon as the Champions League night starts, we just turn into the freaking dominant, dominant team we always I are. I think in terms of the group stage, you guys are very mediocre as well, to be honest. Um, I don't think you guys were very standard We were... Team. Getting wins, but it wasn't... You guys were scraping wins. Yeah, like against Leipzig when we lost, I was... Celtic We looked bad. You guys, I'm surprised you guys got points at, at Celtic, the way they start, the way they played that entire game. They should have yeah. been getting points. But UCL knockouts is when Madrid starts... It's when they shine. We The switch gets turned on. <laughs> and honestly, it, I, we well, look like the favorites again. It? Honestly, like everyone's getting, always going to doubt us again. Like last year, no one thought we were going to make the UCL final. But to be honest, who is a... UCL favorite right now. I'll say Napoli and us. Napoli and Madrid. Napoli. I mean, Dortmund still have yet to lose in 2023. Yeah, but 
Dorman is Dorman. They'll find a way to lose later on. Not because they're bad. It's just I don't think they have the squad to win a Champions League. But they they produce good like good goals, good plays. They have but good players. Think. They have good standout players as yeah. well. But unfortunately, they're not gonna have Jude Bellingham next season because he's going home. I think Adiyeme picked up an injury too, so I don't think they'll end up making it far. They will. I feel like they'll beat Chelsea at the Stanford Bridge. They'll take out Chelsea, but I think after that, it'll probably get tough. Yeah. Um, but the goalkeeper mistakes in this game, Allison and Courtois. Allison said, hold my beer. <sighs> I have no words. I honestly have no words for what the <laughs> fuck he was thinking. Courtois, I honestly thought he was trying to do like a fake shot and try to take Salah, which was annoying at first. But after seeing the replay, the ball, the ball just bounced off his knee. The just bounced off his knee. And he immediately got shot on and it looked bad on his side. <laughs> but with Allison, I think his looked worse because he literally passed the ball on the ground straight to Vinny's feet he's and he just went over. He's considered a goalkeeper with good feet and that proved that did not prove very likely to what yeah. people say. Unfortunately for Allison today, he was it was a very bad day for him, especially when you have Joe Gomez in front of you who also was pretty terrible Joe today. Joe Gomez has been dreadful. Joe Gomez is a terrible center. Like Benzema's both of Benzema's goals, the first one was a deflection off Joe Gomez. Mm-hmm. The second one, he got completely shot on by Benzema with that fake shot or whatever. Uh, the goalkeeper mistake he had. The header Militao scored. No one was Nobody marking was him. Marking he, Allison didn't even attempt to dive. He was just looking at his defenders like, what are you guys doing? And what other goal did they score? Uh, Vinny? No, that was just a proper good goal. Vinny could have had two of Vinny's those. goal was out of nothing. Vinny, Vinny's first was goal was out of nothing. He ended up getting a shot in between three defenders and putting it and placed it perfectly. It was a great finish. Yeah. But that's that's what I mean by Real Madrid switch, like switching on late into the first half. They get a goal out of nothing and immediately just start to terrorize the entire game. They get one bit of momentum off of one goal, off of one good goal. While we're still losing. Yeah, and once once that first goal hits, the deficit just starts to decrease, decrease, and then it's just being just, a Real Madrid game. It's just the other team just starts to game. slowly shrink. It's crazy how, like, it happens. For it to happen at Anfield, though, and to have five past them? No way. I don't know. Um, another Modric masterclass at 38 years of age, slowly turning that Iniesta debate. Higher and higher, to be honest. I mean, there's a lot of people that still think Inés is better than Modric. But I feel like if you're a knowledgeable football fan, you could agree that there is some debate. You could agree that Modric has had a better career than Inés. After the Ballon d'Or. I think think both sides, you could agree to them. Like, you can't really get mad at either opinion. But Modric, he's just different gravy, man. Like, he's going to go down in the history books. Top 10 Real Madrid player of all time. Same with Benzema. Um, top 10 yeah for sure midfielders top 3 Zidane Modric and I can't think of another person right now Casemiro Cruz Xabi Alonso but well, Modric is up there for sure and Vinicius versus versus Trent I predicted this I mean it was a pretty easy prediction Trent, Trent is not a good defender defend. and Vinicius is this hunts deep, people like Trent merchant? yeah 99 dribbling the thing that I, that was bothering me throughout the week, um, there were some rumors that Cavaradona was Cavaradona. I can't even call him Cavaradona anymore. It's pretty disrespectful. Cavaradskelia was there. Was rumors that he was going to go to Madrid for next season, but to me, that's that's questionable because him and Vinny both play the same position. So I don't know why that sh- that would be a lot of that you go to transfer. But what I would say right now is mm. Vinny is untouchable. Like I keep saying. Vinny is the future Real Madrid. Vinny is a future Ballon d'Or winner. And he will not get replaced in that left wing spot. Mbappe, Cavada, Leao. Vinny will forever be the Real Madrid left winger for years to come. For sure. Mm, Cavada. Cavada to Real Madrid's a rumor. And I think it'll probably stay a rumor. I don't see a reason for Papa Perez to even consider looking at Cavada. Especially knowing, like you said, that Vinny is going to end up being an all-time Real Madrid player. Yeah. I don't see him going anywhere, to be honest. Him and... Honestly, Valverde, I, I might see him leaving in the future. Same with Rodrigo, but Vinny, I feel like he would retire here, to be honest. Or, like, leave when he's, like, 35 or something. But he's for sure staying here all his career. And Vinny and Benzema, the best duo in the world still? Or no? Mm, mm, I don't know if I could say that after one Champions League game. No, I mean, you carry it from last season, too. It's just those Champions League nights, man, like... 
They I just think, turn up. I think Osimhen and Cavara have been a way better duo. Honest. Yeah, this season, yeah. I think they've. I think they've undoubtedly been the best duo. So yeah, this I'm season for say. sure. So that's what I'm gonna say. And Osimhen yet again scored another goal today. Another one. Crazy. Um, and it's time for some people to put some respect on Militao. Like this guy's a top three center back in the world since last season, and I've been saying this for a long time. Not Militao doesn't get his flowers. There's always these debates with him and Araujo, and to me, currently Militao is better than Araujo. But in terms of a club and who I would want for the future, I would always say, say Araujo because he's pretty world-class and he's still young. Militao's young too, but in the long run, I think Araujo will be better. But you guys need to start giving Militao his flowers because his defensive ability, his 1v1s, his clearances, he throws himself to everything. He's very underrated. And if you know ball, you would know. <laughs> for sure. What are your thoughts on Militao? I like Militao. I don't rate him above other center backs. Mm, honestly, Licha? Licha? Uh, Licha's clear. Low key. Licha's clear of Militao? Clear. Yeah. One has a walk up medal. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Uh, off the bench? <laughs> What's Militao have? And yeah, Militao didn't even start in the World Cup, yeah. huh? No. Yeah, sit down. <laughs> they would have won if he started, to be honest. No, because Thiago Silva and Marquinhos are also very, very elite center backs. That's the thing with Militao. Oh, no, Militao would start some games. He was right back sometimes. Ah, he played right back, though. But that was the thing. That's, that's probably why uh, Militao doesn't get a lot of respect. Yeah. For the most part, in his selection, he is undoubtedly third. His third, uh, his third, uh, third choice. string, right. Which is... The very first option off the bench. Which looks like shit. Which looks like shit considering your third option center back. But when you look at who are in front of him, it's obvious that he's going to be not getting some playing time until one of them end up retiring. Mm. Um, For the second leg, do you think... No chance for Liverpool at all? No chance? It's... Because this is... Let's be real. This is not the 2019 Liverpool no, that did that against Barca. No, and this isn't the this isn't the same Real Madrid team. This is Champions League Real Madrid. That is what I meant. Barcelona just don't have that in their blood. Since 2015, yeah. yeah. They don't have that Champions League blood. Champ- Real Madrid feast. Going back to the Merdaveo in their home with their fans. With... Nah, with their presence known, it's just going to be... I think I, it's going to be chips for I, Real Madrid. I do think Liverpool is going to like go up again first. I think Darwin goes and scores again, to be honest, but yeah. I don't think they end up doing much. I think Real Madrid just know how to play, know how to play the shutdown game, to be honest. Yeah. They, the most com- they can be the most comfortable team on the planet. Yeah. There's no, there's no telling what, what could happen in the game. Oh shit. Yeah. Um, well, you turned it off for what? Yeah, I fucking flicked it. Yeah. But that was the reaction to Liverpool Madrid game. Let us know your thoughts to this crazy game, man. I mean, I was going crazy. Um, but before we get to the next segment. Predictions real quick. For what? For a Roman, for Roman Jud for Liverpool, second leg, yeah, second leg, or like two one Madrid, two one Madrid, two one Liverpool. Honestly, a say, one goal difference. I think I'm gonna say two one Liverpool, or am I getting too like cautious? I'm gonna Madrid say win Liverpool. like three zero or something. It could it could undoubtedly be that too. I think I'm gonna say two two. I'm gonna say two two. Yeah. Because nobody expected this. We all, I said like 2-1 Madrid. He said 2-1 Liverpool. I think I said 2-1 Liverpool. 7. Had I said Madrid like 2-1 or something like that. No one expected No one this. expected 5-2 Real Madrid. Yeah, man. But the goals kept coming. But before we get to the next segment, for all you guys' jerseys, Champions League jerseys, selecciones, countries. All the above. Make sure to check out FPT Sports code Lads Footy. And it was what? 15% off? The, if the first time yeah. using, you get 15% off, I think it's buy one, get one, some, something like that. Seb isn't here. He knows all that. <laughs> but yeah, it's 15% off. Use our code Lads Footy. And yeah, man, get your kids. Next game, the other Champions League game from today, Frankfurt lose at home to Napoli. It was Frank- a pretty good game, to be honest. Um, Napoli, yet again, looking like the dominant side, like they've been looking like throughout the whole season. Cavara and Osimen And Chucky Lozano today, one man of the match. It was good to see. He was a threat today. Impress, running behind his blistering pace. Got the assist for Osimhen's goal. It was very good to see as a fellow Mexican as well. About time. Yeah. Because he hey, finally does something. Him and Politano are... just been carrying. Yeah, because him and Politano always have like a battle to start off that right wing spot. It's good. It's a good problem for Napoli to have. They have, they they have, have right good backs depth. that want to fight for their first spot. Yeah. yeah. They have great depth. Um, But I want to talk about something that surprisingly I haven't seen a lot in the media. <laughs> The Napoli this year is the 2019 Ajax for sure. But which team looks better? Napoli, undoubtedly. You think Napoli looks better than the 2019 Ajax? Way better than the 2019 Ajax. Way better? Yeah. 
In terms of what? I think in terms of the football that they play. I think Ajax, I think Ajax weren't playing as dominant football as Napoli are playing right now. Mm. Napoli play with such a presence that with such an offensive presence that it seems like every time they're through on goal, they end up putting something in the back of the net. They're so direct and clinical that yeah. I see nobody stopping Napoli at the moment. Yeah. I could agree on that because Ajax didn't play with a natural striker in 2019. They'd use Dusan Tadic as like a center like forward a slash, slash cam and he would supply the wingers Neres and, um, and ZH. Supply Neres, ZH, supply Van de Beek and the young right next to him. Right yeah. Behind him. The thing why I prefer this Napoli side this year is because of the two players they have, Cabaraskelia and Osimhen. Those two players right now are scary. Undoubtedly the best duo in the world right now. They just sniff goals. Os- Osimhen, top scorer in Serie A. Cabaraskelia, I think, is top assister. For a second. As a winger, sure. mind-boggling. And most of them are to Osimhen. And then the depth they have off the bench, insane. They have every position they're set. Whoever gets injured, they say that they have like three options. With Ajax, I feel like they were more dominant in terms of possession and being in control of the game. I don't think they were as lethal no. in front of goal. They obviously had like good options in the wing, but in terms of who has a deadlier attack, I think it's Napoli by far. And if we look, Napoli this year currently are 15 points clear in the Serie A. And it's, I think we're, we're barely halfway in the, in the season, by, by the way. So they for sure win the league. But what Ajax has the upper hand on Napoli right now is the run they had to the UCL semifinal. Ajax beat the reigning champs that year, Real Madrid, and they beat a Juventus with a newly signed Ronaldo that was looking pretty good to reach a UCL semifinal. Napoli have only been in Frankfurt in the first round. We're going to have to see next round. And... They lost to Liverpool in the group stage, but they still finished first, which, which is, is no disrespect to Frankfurt because they were the Europa League champions. Yeah, uh, to say that they're having a to say that they had a hard opponent compared to everybody else would be the very shit statement. Yeah, Frankfurt probably out of Frankfurt, Benfica and Club Bruges are probably the only three teams that you could say that were weak were weaker sided. Yeah, um, but now let's look at the squads from the 2019 Ajax squad and the current Napoli squad. We're going to do a combined 11 from both. So starting off in goal, Onana or Meret? I take Onana. Mm. Yeah, I'm agree. I Onana, Onana that season was actually insane. Was a great goalkeeper because he was doping. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right back, Masrawi or Di Lorenzo? I take Di Lorenzo. I think I take Di Lorenzo. Uh, I think I'm gonna agree with you. Di Lorenzo, captain material, very comfortable at the back, very solid. Masrai was good on the ball. He was a play. He would get some assists as well. He was very good on the balls. <laughs> we're gonna cut that. <laughs> no way, we're not. No way, we're not. No way, we're not. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna say Di Lorenzo. First center back, and this one's good. Uh, Ramani or Delict? Nah, I think it has season. to be Mathis Delic. Yeah, Delic that Dali season. was a top three center back in the world that season. Golden boy that year. And the next one, Daily Blend or Kim? I'm taking Kim all day. Uh, I'll take Kim. Kim, there's rumors that he might sign to Man U. That would be insane. It would be cool. But I'm... Oh, he's a scary for, center not, back. I'm he's looking, huge. I don't think center backs are what we're looking for right now. Though. No? Nah, we can spend them. Just one more? Answer. It's because what he really signed to, to set the bench. I don't he think Lichab and Varane are moving anytime soon. Yeah. And Luke Shaw is also converting to center back at this point. No, he's a left back. He's a safe play. To, he plays sick at the center back. He's a great third option. Yeah. Um, next position, left back, Tagliafico, or they have two options, Oliveira or Mario Rui. Mario Rui. I think I'm going to take Tagliafico, though. Me I too. The, Tagliafico that season was captain, also... The second captain of that side. Yeah, Tagliafico had a very good year that year as well. Uh, first center mid, Frankie de Jong or Anguisa? I think it's easy. Anguisa's good. Anguisa's He's a very, very good, good player. But nah, Frankie de Jong was unplayable. Frankie de Jong was, was unplayable in that AX side, in that right center mid position, left center mid position. Yeah, he was Ajax's fluidity. Uh, let's go Lobotka or Shone. Mm. I think I'm going to take Shone. Shone yeah. was pretty good, yeah. That free kick he scored against Madrid too. When he knocked us out. <sighs> oh my God. What on a strike. Courtois. What a strike. I, I'll go with you. I'll agree with you on that. I'll take Shana. All right. Next one, Zielinski or Van de Beek? I do like Zielinski. 
but Van de Beek, Van de Beek was also good. Award. that 2019 was just very very good just a, I can only say these players I can only pick these Ajax players because Napoli still haven't finished his Champions League run yet yeah if they can continue it then probably it'd have different options yeah um, left winger Kavaraskelia or David Neres <laughs> Kavara, I, Kavara it, had be, it had to be Kavara. Yeah, but David, David Neres that year, his Elasticos, crazy. It's sad to see what well, he hasn't been the same player. He had a good future. Is that Benfica now, I think? Yeah. yeah. He's chilling. See how he comes off the bench? <laughs> Fucking stoned. He's chilling. <laughs> All right, right wing, Chucky Lozano or Hakim Ziyech? <laughs> 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 Try not to be biased. <laughs> Uh, probably it been Lozano. Oh, yeah. After today, yeah. Man of the match no, performance. Yeah, it just, it was a terror for those for that for those left sided players. Yeah. His free kicks too were crazy. His set pieces, his through balls. He was yeah, crazy. He great, great, great on field vision. He good good long shots as well. He was a complete winger, goals and assists. And oh, striker slash center forward, Dusan Tadic or Victor Osiman. Oh, Osiman. Osiman kills the mask. The mask god. I don't even think he needs that shit no more. To be honest, I think, I think he yeah, I think he's it. just wearing it because it's been so realized, good. I think he, that's when he realized that he kind of needs that shit. He's like, he thinks he's Batman or what? <laughs> Matt Creeman. <laughs> Matt Creeman. <laughs> All right. So ultimately, you said Napoli this year yeah. looks better than the 2019 IX? All right. I think it which depends crazy, on the run. Which is crazy because a lot of the players we end up, some of the players we end up picking, what we picked more IX players. I think. Yeah. Because. All those Ajax players were like young more and stand up. They were just more stand up. And if you look back, all those, mostly all those players left like one or two seasons after that. Deservedly so. They're freaking Frankie, insane. Donny, Delict, Ziyech. Ziyech. Neres ended up staying, but he left also. He ended up leaving as well. Yeah. Majrawi took a while Majrawi too. Majrawi lo- took. Damn. Then they replaced him with Gravenberg. Yeah. Damn. He brought out. was good too. And then he was sitting the bench. Yeah. But. I think we're just going to have to see the run of Napoli. But as of right now, I think I'm going to agree and say Napoli is better. Um, who's your, who are you rooting for in the UCL? Since Man is not in the UCL. At that point, I don't really give a shit who wins it, to be honest. But I'm going I'm going for Napoli. I want to see a Mexican win the UCL, <laughs> man. The only Mexican to win the UCL is Rafa Marquez. Can we please leave it like that? Do you really want to, do you really want to hear Chucky to Rafa comparisons? No, we're not going to hear comparisons, but it's obviously good to see a Mexican win the nice Champions to see League. A Mexican win the Champions League again. And or for the first time at least. It wouldn't it. just be a Mexican that's on the bench that wins it. Chucky's been a vital no, piece a, to that he's Napoli. He's a vital team. rotation player. Yeah. He starts, he produces. He, off the bench, he produces. He's been very vital to that team. League and Champions League. <laughs> but sick if he can do it in a green kit. That'd be sick. Hell no. All right. <laughs> and now let's preview the big game. The second leg of the Man U versus uh, Barca. I'm awake now. Preview. The good, at, the good stuff at Old Trafford but instantly I'm gonna ask you do you think Barca has enough to win at Old Trafford no not at all they no have, chance no chance not enough no Pedri no Gavi those are the probably the two biggest players that they've had in this season you can say you can you can say other players you can call out other players if you have no if you two of your starting midfielders are out you stand no chance there's no way Considering the width, considering the style that Xavi plays, Pedri and Gavi have, were so vital and so necessary for that side, for their, more so their stamina, the way they can just move up and down and carry the ball. They were their fluidity, like De Jong for Ajax. If they have no fluidity, I don't think there's any other player in their midfield that can produce what they can. Yeah, I think Barca have no chance, especially if Manu score first, because Manu never lose when they're up by halftime. Nope. To no one, which is, that's an insane style. What's that, like 200 wins or something like that? Mm, about. Straight wins? I think we're like 100. I think we just hit like 100 wins at Old Trafford as well or some shit. Oh my goodness. So no, it's it's really just looking, it's, they'd have to pull something out of their ass in order to get that. <laughs> we'd have to play our, we'd have to play our starting 11 backwards, to be honest, in order for them to fucking get something through. Yeah. And Licha, Lisandro Martinez, Sabitzer, and Anthony are back. But do you think. Any of three of those guys are going to start? I'd have a feeling. I wouldn't be surprised if Licha and Sabitzer start. I think Anthony stands no chance. Um, more so the fact that Sancho, how we're playing Sancho's position is is really sick. Um, Sancho's been playing more of a central position, or he did play it against Leicester, but way more of the central uh, cam area. Bruno Fernandes shifted wide, Rashford up top, and, uh, right course up top and Rashford on the left, and it, it worked really well. The fluidity went really well, and that's how he ended up creating his goal. I would honestly start... Man, you the same way they started against in the first leg. 
even Luke Shaw Center back. I would start like the same exact I, way. I honestly wouldn't be if fine. If it isn't I broke. Be, I wouldn't be okay. I wouldn't be fine with I wouldn't be uh, upset with it if we were to start off the exact same way. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. But obviously, if it's not working, then you're subbing Anthony and all these guys. Um, Sancho and Rashford hitting form coming into this game. Obviously, Rashford after the World Cup, but Sancho's getting good form coming into this guys, game. I told you guys to wait. Be patient, Sancho. <laughs> Sancho's <laughs> cooking. He only has Sancho's, three goals. Sancho's cooking. He only has three goals in the league or two. Three? He'll keep going. He'll continue. And this new role that in the in the role that Ten Hag is trying to play him, in, he stands out a lot more. He get, he picks up the ball way more. He's not just the right mid that's moving up and down, just playing sideways passes. He's now playing more of the ten because Bruno Fernandez can cross the ball way better than Sancho can in the first place. <laughs> it's crazy how Wakehorse like starts every game. He hasn't. He's our anchor. Has he scored a single goal for you guys? Yeah, he scored one against Nottingham <laughs> in the league. I don't care about. <laughs> Yeah, but obviously. But wait, it's it's not. It, he wasn't brought in to score goals. No, you that, said you I s- did say that. I did say that because that was what I, that was my approach. What I expected, I expected like a holler kind of thing. But Ten Hag, uh, Whitehorse is playing a way a very different form. He's playing more the press, the, the false nine, the press, the pressing nine. But like also with the fe- the with defensive ability, he press. He doesn't just press the the defenders. He presses the midfield as well. He helps get them back in rotation, and he's also part of our fluidity through the attack. He's he's there to lay off Rashford. He's there to lay off Sancho, Bruno, yeah. whoever moving through with the yeah. With, I think he's, the run. he's vital for the build up. Obviously, he's six foot six. Like Jesus Christ, he looks slow as hell. Oh no, yeah, so you better. So if, if you're just gonna be our stand up player, you better have a good touch on the ball. And luckily, he he is he is oh he's standard on the ball. Yeah. He gets it done. And I'm gonna bring in debate and try not to be biased. Be a hundred percent objective. Right now, form, future, everything in the table. Who would you take, Rashford or Vinicius Jr.? Everything on table, form, future, everything. That really a question you're asking me? Yeah. You want to just guess my answer already? No. You sure? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you who it's not. It's definitely not Vinicius Jr. Why? As if I take Vinicius Jr. over Marcus Rashford. Why? Because Marcus Rashford, like you said, form, undoubtedly, Rashford is the most informed player on the planet. There's nobody more informed than Marcus Rashford at the moment. Yeah, right now. Vinicius Jr. is not as direct as Vinicius, as Marcus Rashford. He doesn't play the striker role. He doesn't necessarily... He does get in goals, but I'll, he will never score as many goals as Rashford is good in right now. Vinny will I'll, never get that striker position set for him. No, I'll agree with you that he's not as... Direct. No, he is direct, but he's not as a striker. Like, no, no, no. Nah... <laughs> He's not a bet. He's not a better. He's not a better finisher than Marcus Rashford. Yeah, I'll give you that. Rashford's finishing and shooting is Rashford insane. inside the box. will, but will get Vinny, you I can't. I can't give you that. Vinny isn't direct. Vinny is very direct. I, maybe I misworded that because you're right. Vinny does like to go. Vinny does like to go for goal. Yeah, yeah I I do see that. But Rashford is more that striker slash winger. Vinny's a straight up winger down the flank, one v ones, everything. <laughs> How old is Rashford? Twenty five. Okay, so Rashford is supposed to be doing what he's doing right now. Yeah. Vinny is 22. He's already won the Champions League. He won La Liga. Rashford, what has he won? Won FA Cup? Europa League. 2017. Versus Ajax. Oh, yeah, huh? Oh, yeah. Was he, like, vital to that team? Yeah. Mourinho fucking loved Rashford. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Zlatan, Daily Blind, Fellaini, we were sick. So, okay, you just compare Europa League and Champions League, so that's that's one point right there. Um... (laughs) You asked me what he won. I fucking told you. Um, no, it's Vinny. I think Vinny all day. Of course you say Vinny all day. He's 22. There's, He's only going to get but better. We're never, but we're never going to agree in this situation. Where where, no. where would we put this? Because Rashford is doing what he's supupposed to be. He's he's in his prime. Like, he's 25 years old. Yes. He's supposed to be doing that. Vinny. So for that, what? He gets fucking this. He gets miscredited. No, I'm, what I'm saying is about time it? he's starting to hit this. He's been Manchester United's number 10 for what? Three, four years? Mm, about. And you can't lie. Rashford is a confidence merchant. If he's not, conf- <laughs> if he's not confident, he's going to be very average. Like we've seen the you can fucking say past the same two years. thing for Vinicius nope. Jr. Nope. He's not. You can say the same he's thing for Vinicius up to it every Jr. game. The whole stadium against him. Up to it every game. You'll lose 20 mm. balls, but in that 21st, you'll score. Because <laughs> he doesn't give up, bro. It's crazy, this kid. Kid, he's 22. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> he's older than you? Yeah. Call him a child. Yeah. I just... I can't... I can't say... I can't look at Marcus Rashford 
I can't look at what I seen from Marcus Rashford from his early days, from his Mancuni and Pele days to his golden boy days to his shit. His shit changed the form the last two, three years. It, he lost he lost all confidence. And you're right, he is a confidence merchant. But when Marcus Rashford does have that confidence, when he does have the he's fans scary. backing him, he is the he can, he's one of the scariest players you can see on the pitch. Yeah. And it shows. It shows how much he wants to go at it. He wants it shows how much he wants to go at defenders. It shows how much he wants to see the he wants to see an opportunity to hit the ball at the back of the net. He always he's always yeah. looking for something to well, create. What I will give Rashford is he's more important to his team than Vinny is right now. Man you without Rashford Rashford's right now. Fucking carrying us. Man you without Holy Rashford shit. are barely top four. Barely. <sighs> Scraping top four, honestly. It's. I just can't discredit the rest of my players either because the has been amazing. Dude, Rashford has scored every single game. Leach has been. Leach, Luke Shaw has been amazing. No, I'm t- I attack. But, who's gonna score the goals? But yeah, but Rashford undoubtedly is our most. Important. It would have to be Garnacho or something. Bruno, 2019. Garnacho. Garnacho is sick, bro. <laughs> he's. He's he's cool. He's not ready to start. I he's I love Garnacho. If there's one player I could take from menu is Garnacho. I love him. Only off the bench right now. He's not ready to start a single game. Yeah. He started one game and he was dog shit. Yeah. Um, but you could <sighs> all right. Be honest, will Rashford win a Ballon d'Or before he retires? Be honest, <sighs> do you see him winning a Ballon d'Or before if he retires? It was to continue his prime, if he was to just peak a bit more, if he could do this to with the United run with the United season when we're in the Champions League, so next season, yeah, if he can hold out, then maybe. Only maybe because I do also look at how he started this season. He did not. He was not. He was not high and flying at the start either. Yes, he was getting in goals. Yes, he was building confidence. But something changed after the World Cup. The World Cup gave him a very different mindset. I think it was more so the fact that he lost the World Cup. Yeah. And that he didn't start all those games. And he was still like the second top scorer. Yeah. And that's probably it probably pissed him off even more that Gareth Salke still didn't even look at him to start. Yeah. So it just there was a lot of things into that season. There was a lot of things that like built it up for us that led up to it. I it would just be really tough to see him continue like this again. Honestly. I think what it would take for Rashford to win a Ballon d'Or is just trophies. You would have to win a Champions League or the Premier League. That's that's shit. The only if way. he wins both, I think it would have to be Rashford. That's that's the only because he's though. the main man. For now. For now, I think when Aussie Man comes in, him, him and Rashford are gonna be fucking scary. Dude, <laughs> I see um, a resemblance like the style of play they have. Obviously, Aussie Man's not as good of a dribbler as Rashford, but just like the blistering pace in behind Rashford and they Aussie do, Man, they do have a different. They, they do have a very, do have a very specific, like a very um, similar style of play. Yeah. There, the way they get in behind. Yeah, but now with Vinny, you think Vinny will win a Ballon d'Or? <laughs> it's because it's because, like you said, Vinny isn't as important. To his side right now, because we still have Kareem the Dream. But when Kareem the Dream leaves, and and you guys sign Mbappe, what the fuck is gonna happen? Mbappe's gonna play what striker? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, no, we're gonna sign up. We're gonna sign Highland or something. <laughs> what the fuck? You guys want all three of them for? <laughs> nah, that's, that's fucked. I honestly would rather have. It's don't say you'd rather nah, have I'm not somebody say, other nah. than Kylian Mbappe next Dude, to Vinicius Jr. I don't want to see one of these guys shift to the right wing, man. I want to see Mbappe left wing. I want to see Vinny left wing. It, it's because unless Mbappe, we switch to like some crazy Mbappe, 4 4 2, Mbappe Vinny will left. get you goals up top. And Mbappe's, Mbappe's like Rashford, he's a left wing who can who can go up top. Yeah, but he's he's a left winger, man. He's the best left winger in the world. <laughs> but you didn't answer my question. Will Vinny win a belt? <laughs> oh, shit. Um, well, that's what I meant. Like, it, it would have to be the fact that it would have to be that Vinny becomes Real Madrid's number one. Okay, look, watch. If Vinny was, if Vinny this was season, to become Ramos' Vinny most is, important player. This season, Vinny is Madrid's number one. He is our most, most lethal attacker right now. If we win the Champions yeah, League. Rodrigo, Rodrigo Goez is just chilling there, fam. Yeah, that's crazy. I still think he's better. I than just me. think he's been in better form than Vinicius. Oh, no, he hasn't. I think he has been a better Look up the stats. Yeah. Rodrigo looks better to you guys just because of the way he dribbles. And he's a, a smarter player, I guess you could say. But Vinny is... Miles clear than Rodrigo. But <laughs> damn, I got off track because he said that. Um, <laughs> yeah, Vinny is Madrid's main man right now. So it would only take winning another Champions League and he could be high in the charts for that. Because right now it looks there's like he's no going to repeat the season he had last but year. But there's no way after, off of just winning a Champions League that you guys can do that. 
You guys did win the Club World Cup too. Fuck. And what if we come back and win La Liga yeah. after Barca bottle nah, it again? There's no way. That'd be some shit. Seb would never hear the fucking end of it. Which <laughs> he shit. already doesn't. <laughs> oh, shit, can't wait for Thursday. Holy shit. Oh, but He's going to mute the chat. For sure. <laughs> Holy fuck. You're shivering. Yeah, but you said Ten Hag doing wonders. Well, what do you like about Ten Hag? He's bald. Lee Heisenberg. Heisenberg. Ten, ten, ten Heisenberg. He's the one who knocks or what? <laughs> Definitely the one who knocks. He's lost. He doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> it's not Grey's Anatomy, in it? <laughs> <laughs> you watch Breaking Bad and that whack stuff you've been watching. Um, Ten Hag has been able to play a mediocre Man United side and form them into great players. Fred, again, he's so mid. He's forced out Maguire off the starting 11. I don't know why it took three managers to do three. that. I also don't know why it took three managers. Scott McTominay isn't fucking seeing the light of day. Fred is playing well. Casemiro has undoubtedly been one of the best players in the Premier League. That was a given when you signed them. Varane and, that and, was Casem- also Varane a given. and Casemiro just. You guys they, are signing they, Madrid. They, 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 they didn't change. They didn't change. It really feels like Cholos and Renica. Oh, shit. Stealing good players. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'll give Ten Hag the most credit for is the main man, Marcus Rashford. He's, he's, turned he's, them, he's, he's turned helping them Rashford. A, he's turned him into a fucking beast. He's reach his into peak. A beast. And. It's only a matter of shit. How many goals will he end up with this season? And how will he look look next season when you guys are in the Champions League? And how Ten Hag will build around Rashford? Shit, will he build around Rashford? If he's, you think he's gonna sign any star player? I don't see him signing like a superstar. No, I don't think. I think you guys think should it, build off I Rashford. Think at this point in time, there really is no other player to build off, especially since he's peaking. Since he is peaking, twenty five. There's really no point. There's really no reason why we shouldn't build off of him. Yeah. Um. But back to Ten Hag. Um, the Barca, I mentioned that he's doing wonders because I'll start off with the Barcelona game. Ten Hag ended up not even playing the number nine. Ten Hag, Ten Hag, wow, Weghorst wasn't playing the nine. Weghorst was playing the 10. And like I said, he was just being the build up play. He was just helping the build up play while Rashford was doing his solo thing up top. That didn't change. That wasn't the thing until Barcelona had scored. Once mm. Barcelona scored and we were down, that's when that's when you had seen the rotation. That's when you had seen Bruno shift right. You had seen Wehorse, Wehorse central, Sancho left, and Rashford up top. And you saw nothing but Rashford breaking the lines, breaking the lines, breaking the lines. That was all Ten Hag. We all ended up getting a goal. We ended up getting a second goal. And we we fucking played like shit. We didn't play like shit. We built we had one mistake. We had one mistake and they ended up getting across that. That hit the back of the net. That missed everybody. Casemiro, which is the only the only reason that it happened off of just a, a silly mistake because we got too comfortable. But I think Ten Hag has been able to adapt with what he's what he's had already. Yeah, the fact he was going to he went to Camp Nou and and unlucky to come out with the victory. That's that speaks we a lot. We should have we should have gotten the three points at the we should the three points. We should have gotten the win at Camp Nou. We should have left with the with the fact that we were ahead. Yeah, I think Barcelona ended up getting really lucky. Mm. But yeah, guys. Those were the review and preview of this week. Prediction, Man U Barca. At Old Trafford with no Pedri, no Gavi. Two. Cassier and Busquets, the two fucking lanky bricks running the midfield. 2 0, Man U. I think they hold a clean sheet. Um, I agree. 2 1, Barcelona. <laughs> Just kidding. 2 1, United. 2 0, United. Nice. All right, guys, those were the previews, the preview and the review of the week. Let us know, score predictions, what you thought of the games, Napoli, Madrid, anything, man. This was, this was a good week of football. And yet again, make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Get your kids FPT Sports. Use a code, Lads Footy. And yeah, see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.